Uh, I'm going to talk about the, as you can, as you can see, questioning and reconceptualizing North-South cooperation uh, through a case study that I, I've been following for a couple of years in Central America and specifically in, in Salvador. So this is a quick uh, outline of what I'm going to talk about in the next 10, 15 minutes. So with a conceptual framework of the growth and cooperation and then describe my case study, evaluating it and trying to summarize what are the learnings and what the questions that are still open. So we know that the growth in the global south is very, it's a very, it's a very hard question. It's a very hard question. Uh, first of all, we might discuss about necessity and desirability of, of the growing in the global south and also about the, the appealing that the idea of the growth can have in, global, in the global south. Um, we know that the growth, the growth and the, the awareness of ecological, for instance, ecological progress in northern countries may have arisen in the, arisen in the, in the past decades because, right because of our wealth and also because of what Martinez Elliott calls the affluence of the affluence. So facing an extremely uh, excessive situation, while on the other side, southern countries might, ri might rather experience that awareness, that uh, environmental care through what is rather called the environmentalism of the poor, so posing great, great extracting jobs, I don't know. On the other side, in southern countries, maybe we have more compelling issues. So basic needs are not always met. Why our sense of sensitivity was born in a situation where, where those needs were, were, were much more than met. It was also said that transition in the north is, however, a prerequisite for the south. For the south to grow, on a pure economic growth or to grow with uh, the decelerating growth, as was also said, or just to allow the South an alternative. On the other hand, we, we might also say that, as Latouche said in a couple of his words that are here cited, that's, that the growth was somehow born in the South. Uh, also, Martinez yesterday was recalling that probably the critics to development in Africa, to critics to the extraction in Africa might have been found as one of the, 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 the first, the first uh, suggestions, the first ideas towards the growth. More importantly, the global, global movement for environmental justice is uh, meeting, is having the global south environmentalism and the global north environmentalism meeting towards probably the same objectives. We also said yesterday during the plenary that this is not given for granted. Anyway, this would allow a stronger political ecology for both the North and the South. So it could be, it can be a common challenge. And it will be about removing obstacles and avoiding the Southern countries to take dead on street, dead on street. Also, like most of the Southern countries are are now involved and caring about building growth economies. So removing the obstacles and removing some of yeah some obstacles could help them avoid help avoid dead ends to take to take dead end trees. What the situation now about north south relationships? So at the institution, at least at the institution, the governmental level. There is uh, international aid, what is also called foreign aid, development aid, which is mostly driven by the self-interest of the donors. Here I'm citing a list of work that I was surprised that there are so, there's much literature about studies on the self-interest on the donors that we might summarize in three different cate categories. So one is a commercial reason, trade having the cooperated country remove recent trade obstacles to allow our economies, our products to go there more easily. Second is a political, political interest uh, from having allies in a certain country, in a certain region with a particular geopolitical interest until having uh, favorable votes at the UN Assembly, as it was cited and um, studied in a couple of works here. 
Last, a recent work by Kisangan and Pickering argued that international aid is sometimes coupled to military intervention instead of being an alternative tool for it. What, what's another risk of North-South cooperation, uh, uh, North-South international aid, is the creation of dependence, of dependence of the core of the recipients on the donors. And for instance, Murithi said that many African countries ca could not finance their own budgets without foreign aid, foreign financial aid. It was also said that receiving international aid might be an implicit acceptable acceptance of ex the existing mechanism of dominance, allowing the very donation. And at the same time, it can be, and sometimes it is also explicitly, is an encouragement to follow a certain model, and so to build a growth economy as well. More delicate is the situation of the cooperation, so not the institutional, not the governmental level, but for instance the level of NGOs or pure volunteers. Also here we could run the risk of having a possible conscious or unconscious uh, level of self-interest. Could be the personal relief or redemption of going to volunteer somewhere or an institutional reason, or for reason a religion, confessional reason to go and, and spread the word. Or uh, even when also cooperation, not institutional, is funded by other sponsors, that could be some other form of interest. Another kind of, another problem is the excessively caring approach that some of the cooperation operators have been adopting in the in the decades, so weakening, weakening the capacity of the recipients to, to manage the situation by themselves and all, some, sometimes relying too much on the foreign aid, giving it for granted on the one time and not recognizing their own potentials to do something by themselves and with their own means. Another risk is the also here an unconscious, unconscious ethnocentrism causing also you have to follow an external model in a, in a minor scale to work with the previous section, but still an invitation to do, to do like, like northern culture. Another delicate question is the monetization of, uh, of this solid solidarity, when you know, cooperation is also a job and there could be the risk, like also the implicit risk of, want, like of wanting to preserve that kind of, of business is your, is your your life, you work on it. On the other hand, you have volunteer volunteering. Sometimes this kind of as volunteering, volunteer tourism. Strong point in the global south. So uh, one thing the, in the global south is uh, the strong point is the heritage of close cultural past. For instance, the preservation of natural rhythms, natural farming, so something that was also close to us until 50 years ago and was completely abandoned and forgotten. Also in many, many of the global south countries, is, there is a, a transformation uh, currently towards, towards the following our model, for instance. I, here talking about the, the, the case study in uh, El Salvador. El Salvador is a very tiny country in Central America. A, the case study took place in the department of Cabana, Cabanas. It's one of the two poorest departments of the country. Rural community of three to 5,000 uh, inhabitants living in a, in a valley surrounded by hills. So think this as a microcosm. We're going to, to understand later why. This is a community that lived on the, the that experienced the, the civil war in the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, the exile in uh, Honduras through the refugee camps where the where peasants that used to who used to work in different lands owned by very few owners, the got together, got together in a, and decided to go back to El Salvador and build a community based on some 
commun strong community uh, values. Okay, they're basing on the agriculture, and pro producing mainly corn and beans, uh, the local identity made of, for instance, there is a community, community house, community center, commu they also have a community interphone and so on. It is historical building techniques, etc. They are being threatened by the Western meat. So everywhere in the country we are seeing the, the first hints that uh, testify the, 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 West, the presence of the Western meat. So there is a pro it's full of local problems that I'm going very quickly about this, okay, and some environmental plights. So I was telling you about the, the, the this, thing, this community as a micro microcosm because all the switch towards the like the globalized way of also of farming is causing very ecological issues in the in the, the community. And since it's very small and everything is connected in the linear circle, uh, they are realizing that this this is not working. So that's why they asked the help of the Polytechnic di Torino, the Polytechnic University of Turin, Italy, uh, through the an association that is formed by the very uh, inhabitants of the community and that was uh, Develop as a participatory process towards towards the the creation of guidelines for the for managing the situation, trying to 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 avoid the, the self destruction basically. So what was interesting about this uh, about this thing is that there, there was no auto, not at all influence on the very process. So it was just facilitating the dialogue between the community and recovering that kind of, that, of dialogue they have been losing in the past 20 years. And it, it is curious because the results were very interesting because we have agroecology, return to agroecology, aband abandoning chemical fertilizers, for instance, land and water protection, the, re the recovery of their own story and memory and values, a return to cell production to be more local and avoid importing from abroad uh, the tools they need and that they're made of also materials that they cannot process. So that will only become waste that they cannot manage and they're polluting the, that community. And also return to a sharing philosophy through the proposal of uh, community farming. Okay, thank you. Uh, so definitely there was a community empowerment by, by discussing together, by having organized group and like a common people gathering through all the through all the events of this participatory process. No, us was a group of six people there, just lived there and shared our experience with them, but with no we with no pro, like desire to interfere with them. So just telling our stories, they were going to tell us theirs and that was that was the main the main part so some difficulties we ran through is the hierarchies inside groups and the generational gap and for instance the the, the, the difficulty in involving some brackets of the population that were in that were uh, in the field all day so some just concluding, learning uh, open questions so there was a very high level of active participation that is, I think it's very useful for the, the self-planning and the self-management of the community with the local residual inclination residual because it, it has not ceded completely to the individualism that is becoming dominant toward, like, due to the northern imaginary and what, what remains of their social structures and organization living together with, with them was beneficial to us and to them, because it was an exchange of what, like also the, helping them, the constructing the imaginary, what, what works and what not works here, and for us learning what can be still recovered from them, to, from them towards us. Ooh, it was already discussing the degrowth area about cooperation and degrowth. Okay, just continue. Just, just a minute. Marcellesi in uh, Barcelona talked about this problem 
concluding with the proposal of more sustainability, eco building, and energy material savings. Uh, I'm wondering is this enough? Is this the case in a degrowth oriented vision? So, here I'm just proposing some, some words. Could it be just Will the, the, the cooperation still be needed in a future where there will be not exploitation of the global south? Would it be just about dialogue, about learning from each other? So bi-directional learning while sharing our experience, our common and different experiences. So I'm wondering also who will help who? And so how can we learn from, from mistakes also facing cooperation. So will it be just the exchange, uh, mutual exchange? But all these are just open questions. So if we had time, I'd be glad to, to discuss about this with all of you. Thank you. Okay, so questions to the panel. Okay, so yeah, I just went through very quickly about that. So we just went went there without without boosting anything about our like our, our provenience. So we just went there humbly living like with them. So it was in the everyday exchange with them that the like the question would come to us about how is society here and how is the the medal on the other side of the medal, but it was no, it was just about receiving, receiving question and free talking about that. Of course, part of the the community and probably the per, the, the, the the brackets of the population who did not take part in the in the participative process are still affected by that myth. Of course. There are some people who migrated to the United States, for instance, not meeting their family, probably not having seen their children since they were born or since they were very little, and just sending money to them, trying to make enough for their absence, and inviting the people, sometimes are the, the, the grandparents, the grandmas, who are raising their children, just to make up for their absence by in emulating the, 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 the United States, the worst. There was an interesting, uh, interesting picture here. I had to, to go quickly about this. For instance, this this was a 15 years old birthday that was held in the community center. The community center recalling the values of the community, the values of uh, of so, like strong cooperation among the community participants. So it was the opposite of individualism. They were recalling all the, the, the war, the civil war, the, 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 the communal um, refugee camps, and also the opposition to the Northward, some of them called the Northern imperialism. At the same time, four or five families for the moment are using also that space to celebrate their own success, so towards an individualism. Of course, they were not part of the, the processes, they were not interested. It is a small, for, for the moment, a small part of the population. So it is present, we cannot deny it. It was questioned by the rest of the population, by all who took part in the participative processes. So they questioned this. Thank you. I don't know if I, I replied yeah. comprehensively. Yeah. Of the questions, but yes? And you mentioned that you noticed there is a capacity deficit uh, in these communities. What do you think are adequate approaches, uh, approaches to fill this capacity? Do you think that with such actions as you, as you did that, um, like exchange, cooperation, uh, can be a process to develop these capacities that are needed in these communities? Or so I think that the answer is contained in the, the potential of those countries. Uh, they may, like, that could be, could be summarized in one word, which is memory. So the capacities are being forgotten and probably the discarded because they're not meeting the imaginary, the northern imaginary. 
So, but they're still present in the population. For instance, the capacity of farming organically. <laughs> they, they know how to do it. They're just switched, mentally switched, to something which is faster and easier. And so as the local, uh, local art, local produ production, very basic production with local materials. So it is a phase where not everything is lost. There's not a lack of capacity. There is a transi transition towards abandoning some capacities that could be work, that could be useful not to, not to also depend on money. For instance, now there's, they're all focusing on intensive production on one crop or two crops, and they cannot sell it because they're producing too much core that they cannot sell it. But then they have lost all the capacities to produce something else, so they cannot buy from outside what they need. And the other capacity was more immaterial. It was the losing the capacity of dealing about their problems among themselves. They used to have meetings every, every week. So district council and then community assemblies that are more, less and less participated every year. So that, like that habit, that tradition would bring with it the capacity of taking decision of sharing the problems, not only, not just mm, mm, caring about your own interest, be it your personal or, or your group, because they are organizing very groups, thematic groups, but listening to the problems of the other groups and of the other people, and so sharing, it's just sharing and discussing. That, that's a capacity who's being weakened. But I really believe that there's a, they have been weakened, but they are not completely lost. So they can, they still can right. re rehabilitate them. Okay, thank you. So we have 15 minutes left. Let's just open the space now for questions to all presentations. And that was just a small If you look at the, the demographic, uh, how many were old people, young people, what was that kind of thing? For education, for example, to, to try to keep the education in through these memories and through this approach for young people. So were young people present? Was it a high, high majority of people? Or were they more of any older um, people within the community? No, they were both, both. Yeah, the gen quite, very young generation, so around 20 years old. Okay. The, the slightly older generation, about 30 years old, who, who still had the memory of the civil <coughs> war and of the camps, the refugee camps, because they, they were born during that time. And then all the, the older generation, the elder generation that were the, 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 the like 50, 60 years old. So there was a wide spectrum. And at the same time, there is like young people, uh, young people are, are very like a wide part of the population. So also the community is going to, to invest much on in education. And so among the, the com like the com the, the actual pro projects following those guidelines is to uh, create uh, an agroecology address inside the community school at the secondary level. Okay. <laughs>